Hello and welcome to the Friday, August 9th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I think earlier this week I talked about how difficult it is uh, to properly prevent cross-site scripting in webmail systems in part because you have email that contains HTML being displayed inside an HTML page. Well, uh, there is sort of a little variation of this theme, but this time with a problem for the defenders. Many email systems now are inserting warning messages into emails, essentially telling the user that the email is coming from an external source, or in the case of Microsoft 365, that this is the first time you are communicating with a particular user. The intent here is to make it more difficult for an attacker to spoof the from address or come up with lookalike addresses and warn the user to basically double check the from address. The way these messages are inserted is by essentially inserting an HTML snippet at the top of the body of the email. But of course, that HTML snippet now has the same problem again, that it lives inside the larger HTML body of the email and various cascading style sheet tags, for example, apply to that inserted uh, text as well as to the entire email. And that's sort of where the trick here comes in that William Moody uh, wrote about in a blog. In the case of Outlook 365, it's essentially just a table tag that has to be overwritten with a respective style, for example, with a font size of zero and a color of white, which will render the warning unreadable. The same trick or similar trick can also be used then to, for example, spoof the check marks that are being used to indicate that a particular email is encrypted or signed. The issue has been reported to Microsoft. Microsoft may fix it in the future, but doesn't see it as severe enough to immediately fix it. Again, this will just eliminate the warning. It doesn't otherwise make the email more dangerous or so than it would be without the warning being applied. And at Black Hat this week, HD Moore and Rob King presented a talk showing various weaknesses in SSH implementations. SSH is, of course, one of the most common remote access protocols. It is considered pretty secure in part because, well, it appears to be simple being text-based. On the other hand, as many authentication protocols and encryption protocols, a lot of details here are in the details. So as part of the talk, they did release a new tool called Shamble, I guess how you pronounce it, but starts with SSH instead of just SH that will test your SSH configuration and your SSH servers for various issues that they identified. The tool is available on GitHub. Hadn't had a chance yet to run it myself to see how it well it works and if it identifies any issues sort of in my network here if you had a chance uh, to run it uh, let me know how well it worked for you and if you found any surprises and talk yesterday about some changes uh, coming uh, to mac os with the next version sequoia there is an other change uh, that is raising some eyebrows and that's about the permissions uh, to screen record. Uh, you may have seen this uh, where if you install software on Mac OS, uh, like for example, Zoom that allows screen sharing and the first time you use it, you need to actually give that software permission to record your screen, which makes a lot of sense because it's a very intrusive and of course, dangerous uh, feature. But so far, you had to approve it once, and that basically took care of it. Apparently, in macOS Sequoia, you will have to reaffirm this permission once a week. So once a week, you'll see a pop-up asking you yet again if you still want to allow the software to share your screen. I see where this makes some sense because users, after they're sort of excited about a new piece of software, so all too easily give permissions away and later, well, uh, 
it's kind of difficult to go back in and review these permissions periodically. On the other hand, of course, there is this prompt fatigue setting in where you're just being bombarded with all kinds of security prompts. And then, of course, you stop reading them. Not sure what to think about it, uh, but uh, certainly something to keep in mind as you're upgrading in particular, as you may get requests or comments from users about these pop-ups. And I think back in January, I briefly may have mentioned in a podcast that ICANN is considering reserving the dot internal top level domain for internal use. Well, this proposal has now been adopted. The idea is to use it just like you use 10 dot and other RFC 1918 addresses, but for host names. And just remember the one top level domain you probably don't want to use for internal use is dot local. Well, and this is it for today. We do have some outages likely coming up tonight. So from Thursday to Friday night, as our sysadmin team is cleaning up some issues from yesterday's lengthy outage, the site may be unavailable for a couple minutes here and there as they're moving configurations around. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.